Hey, everybody, this is Perch. Um, I had a weird moment, so I want to, uh, this is, there's no mail involved here. Um, this is just me kind of talking out of my heart and my head. So um, I had a, a conversation. I had lunch with somebody today, and the person has no idea that I have a channel, that I'm Perch, that I, you know, own comic shops, that I, any of this. Okay, this is just purely a uh, kind of a, a setup. When, when you do a lot of um, consulting, and by the way, for what it's worth, I'm not a consultant right now. But when you do a lot of this type of work, um, you meet people. There's a lot of, they, they call it corporate dating. And it's not romantic dating. It's where, like, they put two people together, like, hey, you're a, you know, you're a data person and you're a financial person. Let's put the two of you two together and have a good conversation. Anyway, um, I'm serving right now as kind of a, you know, mentor slash kind of, advisor to some people so they put me together this guy and, and we're having a conversation about uh you know the growth chart and markets and earnings and and so on a lot of financial stuff very boring stuff uh, particularly for this channel by the way before i go into the rest of this um i took a lot of shit when i said that InBev, i.e bud light and all the rest um i i took a lot of shit when i said you know what i think this is overblown a lot of people are making a big deal out of this. And my prediction is that the stock market will bounce back and they'll, you know, whatever earnings it will off. It's like $2 billion. It wasn't ever $2 billion. Anyway, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of loss. Has anybody looked at InBev recently? Have you gone to your stock tracker and looked at, uh, typed in I-N-B-E-V, see what, what's going on? Would you, do you, do you, would you like to do that? Anybody want to go in there and like, uh, you got an iPhone, right? Go to, go to stocks and type in InBev and then just like click the little thing at the bottom to show the one-year chart, the two-year chart. I just, I'm just suggesting you might do that just as, a, just as an aside because so many of us are tortured and bent around the axle around, you know, the outrage of the day and you lose sight of the bigger picture. So I, I, would, I would just suggest, you know, you might, you might do that. By the way, I don't know when this video will be posted. It is, uh, what is it? It's February 7th, right now. Feb 7th, 2 7 2024. That's a recording of this video. I will try and make effort to get this out relatively soon because if I wait too long, who knows? It could be March or April and this video comes out. And then, like, the CEO of, of uh, Bud Light like, murders a bunch of people and then the stock tanks and they all sound like an asshole right now. But right now, as of uh, 2 7, uh, I'm just saying, for the people who are predicting the entire thing was going to implode, eh, P.S., you know, as well, uh, did anybody see the news story about how Donald Trump endorsed Bud Light? Yeah, yeah, that happened. You know, check out the news. It's weird, right? Yeah, it's weird. Um, by the way, if, we, if I really want to pour a bunch of salt in the wound and just make all of the uh, ASJWs angry... And the SJW, but fuck it, make everybody angry. SJW, anti-SJW, whatever it is. Has anybody looked at uh, Disney stock lately? It's, uh, again, February 7th, and uh, the earnings report's coming out, I believe, tomorrow. And uh, all predictions is that Disney is going to beat estimates, and the stock's going to spike. So, uh, again, this is a stock market, though. Depending on when this video comes out, it may have gone up, gone down. Who the hell knows? That's just how it works. That's how stock works. That's something that's different. You can't get outraged over a moment in time. You have to look at the big picture and the fundamentals of the business. All right, all right. All right. Getting away from all of that. Okay. Uh, because it's fun. I was meeting with this, this person, this guy, and we were talking about business fundamentals, and then he mentioned, hey, uh, which is true. You did an interview where you um, you talked about visual storytelling, which is something that I did. I talked about visual storytelling and how important visual storytelling is to you know explaining a business or digital disruption or any of the, the various things. And I talked about how comic books were a master at sequential art and storytelling. And the guy goes... Um, I love comic books. And suddenly I'm having a completely different discussion. You know, I was talking about business and again, he knows nothing about me or anything I do. 
This is my alternate lives of all the different pieces that I do in my life. And suddenly he's like, I, I studied graphic art in college and I, I read the Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics and we did Watchmen by Alan Moore and we did Mouse and we did a couple of like the, the big graphic novels. He's like, I was fascinated by that too. So we had a great conversation about comics completely organically. Neither of us knew anything about each other. He doesn't know anything about me. And I didn't go, well, hey, you know, I have a YouTube channel. You could subscribe. I just, I didn't get into any of that bullshit. I just wanted to talk about comics. And what was incredible about this is um, it's amazing to me the relationship that we we suddenly had this deeper level of coordination between the two of us is this, this bond over comics. And what struck me there for a moment is that uh, comic books, if you're on Twitter, you're on Facebook, and you're listening to like, it's very easy to assume that comic books is a bunch of horse shit that, by the way, I don't know if this is translating to the video, but there's a guy next to me who apparently has drilled holes in his muffler because Texas, and he is just like, this is the loudest fucking car in the world. Hopefully the, uh, you know, the audio cleansers and everything is filtering out this dumb jackass. But anyway, he's making insane noise from his dumbass car. When I say dumbass car, it is a white Miata. The guy is is driving around in a, I have to believe, 1998 white Miata making a bunch of noise from his muffler. And I think he believes he sounds cool, but this is the biggest douchebag. Anyway, sorry. All right, back to comics. Sorry, I have to keep getting interrupted. Um, comic books have a power that is easy to ignore when you're you're list you know you're you're reading tweets by Mark Brooks talking about you know being an asshole and I don't mean to pick on Mark because I hear you know rumor mill I I've I I haven't paid attention I full disclosure I haven't seen a Mark Bo Brooks tweet is he still calling himself Dread Pirate I I don't know uh, but I haven't seen one of his messages in I, I gotta say at least six months but. If you go onto Twitter or you go onto Facebook or you go onto Blue Sky or wherever you happen to be, you would have the impression that there is this big battle between, you know, CG and non-CG or, 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 you know, people who are toxic fans and not toxic fans. And, and you would like, you read like Heather Anto's, you know, bitching about how shitty her life is, or you will look at, you know, the various, uh, you know, people on the other side, like all comics are dying or like, you'll get into this bullshit. And yet comics holds a special place in the heart of, of, of many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. The problem is not comics. The problem is that comics aren't reaching people who can continue that love and carry it forward. When I have conversations with people like this guy about comics, we wind up talking about, the Dark Phoenix saga. We talk about Jack Kirby and the kind of crazy stuff he used to do. We talk about, um, if it, you know, if we get really, really, really nerdy. We talk about the uh, five years later Legion. We talk about the triangle era of the Superman titles. We talk about, you know, the massacre and Claremont's uh, trifecta of events between, you know, the, uh, the mutant massacre, Fall of Mutants and uh, Inferno. You, you, you just, there's lots of things we talk about. Watchmen, Dark Knight Returns, Mouse, um, Zot, you know, uh, we, we talk about all these different things. Talk about the first time that uh, Mark Blar came on and, and started to do, you know, his run on the authority or kind of uh, like the various pieces that get done, you know, kick ass. You know what the common thread is in everything that I just said? It's all more than 10 years old. In many cases, more than 20 years old. That's the problem. Whether you are a... What, no matter what faction you currently place yourself to, or maybe you place yourself to no faction, because quite frankly, the unaffiliated audience of comic fandom is the largest. If you're looking at a pie chart, the people who are not pledged to any group SJW, anti-SJW, CG, anti-SCG, like whoever you happen to be, 
the the group that is the not attached to any of these people, none of the above, is the biggest group in comics fandom. But universally, people remember books that are 20 years old. So I ask you, what is it that people remember and talk about from the last five years? What is exciting? It's not Saga. I like Saga, or I liked Saga. I, I haven't read Saga. I mean, Saga just went... I don't even know what's going on with Saga anymore. It dawned on me the other day, like, I haven't read an issue of Saga in like four to five months. And then I thought to myself, have they published an issue of Saga in the last four to five months? I don't know. And God damn it, I'm more tied into comics than nearly anyone. I And I literally have no idea. But, like, The Walking Dead was a phenomenon in comics. Invincible was mostly there. I think it's getting a second life via the TV show. But what, in the last five years, does anyone really care about? And that, that may sound harsh. I mean, if you're, um, I, I, I don't know, if you're uh, Al Ewing or you're Scott Snyder or you're Jason Aaron or Dottie Cates or whoever else, that probably pisses you off. And I don't mean to piss you off. But what, what has made an impact in the last five years? That's the problem. Or is anything making an impact? There's a lot of amazing people who I've talked to on this channel and who I haven't talked to on this channel. I like Mark, Mark, Mark Miller. Um, I've done the, I've did the interview with him, but I like him. I chat with him. Um, I think he's, he's a fun guy. Um, I think he he desperately has a passion inside of him to to make great comics. I like uh, I like Sean Gordon Murphy. You guys know I do. We've talked to him. Uh, we've I've talked to him many many times. I like him. He's a great guy. Um, I like Jim Zub. Fuck, I like Jim Zub. What a what an amazing guy. Kari Andrews, um, Ben Temple Smith. Um, you know, uh, I could go down the list. If you want to know who I love in comics, look at the interview list. You know, I, I love him. Jeff, I love Jeff. I, I mean, th these are people who are passionate about comics. That's a common thread against all these people. These are people whose ideologies, views on life, you know, politics and everything else are, I'm sure, all over the place. Completely and utterly different. Love Louis Simonson. God damn it. Every time I'm able to talk to, to Luis, it just so... I'm reminded of how much I love comics. I feel a, a love in my heart for Louise Simonson. There are so many people in comics that are are great people from all different worlds. And I, I, I apologize right now if what I'm saying is offensive. I don't mean it to be. What has made a mark in the last five to ten years for the mainstream? I don't know if anything has. There's been some good comics. I mean, God damn it, I've loved a lot of comics in the last... I mean, Alex Ross's uh, Fantastic Four, the Full Circle book. Fuck, that's a good book. It's so good. There's, I can just go down the list. Yes, I know. Um, I, I've been accused of being a show for this guy, but I, I like White Knight. I like plot holes. You know, I, I, I can just... I like, and I know I'm in the minority here. I know many of you feel differently. I like Jeff Thorne's Green Lantern. I did it. It worked for me. It doesn't need to work for you. It doesn't, but it worked for me. But overall, when I sit down to talk to somebody and we have no knowledge of each other and we just, for whatever reason, discover that both of us love comics and the, the, you know, the person I'm talking to starts rattling off the comic books that they love, why is it that they're all 20 years old? Why? You know, he's going to like, he's talking about how much he loves Daredevil Born Again. I love it too. But why nothing recent? Because I know for a fact a lot of the names I mentioned and many, many, many more people that, you know, on the internet love and hate. There are people who are pouring their hearts into comics right now. And some of those people who are pouring their hearts into comics are also assholes online. You know, this is the thing. You can be passionate about comics and be a prick at the same time you absolutely i mean that trust me it's possible but um 
people are pouring their hearts into comics, but where are we going? What are we getting? We've had this amazing gift to all of us in that crowdfunding and independent comics has a new life. But what's being remembered? What's be what's what's the legendary book? I like uh, Kick Ass. When I first read Kick Ass by Mark Miller, I, I really enjoyed it, and then I liked his universe. I liked you know every I like I liked and I liked Rick Remender's universe. I liked uh, what Tokyo Ghost. I like I liked um, Seven to Eternity. I liked a lot of his stuff too. I I mean, I love comics, so I'm a sucker. I will love all kinds of stories, but you know what? I like, I, you know, I, I have deep respect for Remender. I think he's a great guy. I think he got absolutely fucked. Uh, but he's a great guy. And, you know, troubled. But a good guy. Do you know how many times I've had conversations with people where somebody has mentioned uh, a Remender comic as something that, that they remember that was like a, a hallmark of their comic reading life? Zero. Zero times. By the way, if you're if you're a mender listening to this right now, and sorry, Rick, um, that that sounds shitty. I know it does. I'm I don't I don't I'm not bashing you. I'm asking an honest question. What's it gonna take? If you're Scott Snyder, um, Scott Snyder is a guy who has poured his heart into a lot of his books. You know, if you talk to him. He desperately loves Batman and the work he's done there. I know he's done a lot of independent works, but fuck that guy loves Batman. Why is it that the Snyder Capullo run on Batman is not one that people mention? Because they don't. And this is, I, I promise you, I am not taking a shot at Scott Snyder or Greg Capullo. I'm not at all. I'm honestly asking the question, what's it going to take for modern comics, for anything in the last 10 years. Jonathan Hickman um, created his Fantastic Four run into his Avengers run into Secret Wars. Many of you who are comic fans right now listening to this channel love it. Many of you have talked about uh, Tomasi's uh, Super Sons book and how much they love that. How come, though, nobody talks about those books in the same kind of way they talk about Watchmen or Mouse or even, you know, understanding comics. Why is that? What's wrong? What are we missing? Because the passion is there. I mean, look, granted, you know, everyone could say, like, I don't think Teeny Howard's passion is there with Catwoman. I mean, sure. I, I, I have no idea, but sure. But many of you have seen the interviews, seen the passion from, you know, Tomasi, from Snyder, from, you know, Miller, from all kinds of people. You know, even as troubled and fucked up and drug addled as Donnie Cates is, like, there was some passion there. This guy was on top of the world. Is anybody going to be talking about his Venom run in 20 years? I don't think they will. I don't think so. I'd like to be wrong, but I don't think they will. So what's it going to take? Is it just the industry is broken? Nobody's going to remember anything? That's not an industry problem, by the way. That's an us problem. That's a humanity problem. What's it going to take? I don't know. The passion in, in a lot of cases is there. Not everywhere. I'm not saying every single person who does comics is passionate. Some people will say that. Like every single person who does comics is a you know unicorn who deserves to be loved and respected. I'm not saying that. They, they There's not. There's people who are trying hard and people who aren't. For sure. But why is it the people who are trying hard aren't achieving more? Seems like they should, right? Honestly asking. Thanks for listening.